It's warm out, it's been warm all week long. Will be for a while too, according to the state climatologist. Hey, sir, how you feeling? Thanks for chasing news. I'm actually going down to see Pam Mount at Terre Haute Orchards. I don't know what's going on. Am I cool? Made for a good day, actually, to go for a walk with Gary Mount, who you may know, the owner uh, and grower in chief at Terre Haute Orchards over in Lawrence. I mean, people come here, they they want the fruit. Right. They, they, you can't say, oh yeah, well, you know, it was it was too warm in the fall. You have to you have to do what you can. I was trying to get a bead on what such winter heat means for Garden State growers. We've had warm December's before, maybe not quite as warm as this. We've also had some really cold December's. I mean, sure. we're, where uh, right after Thanksgiving it went to six degrees. There's I, I snow on the ground really right well. now, yeah. But that's the beauty of living in New Jersey. A lot of variation. <laughs> Good attitude, Gary. Love it. He adds, Bill, that there's adjustments that growers can make. Maybe you prune a little bit more on the apple trees, less on the peach trees. Essentially, a guy needs to know his business. Pam and Gary tell me the warm weather is not all bad. It's enabled them to pour the concrete foundation for a new barn where some of their winemaking operations will live. So they're taking advantage of it as well as a adapting to it. Bill, you ride down Cold Soil Road to make a ride on Carter Road and you're at Kale's Nursery and Landscape in Princeton. Owner Doug Kale told me yes, absolutely. If the heat keeps up, uh, there will be consequences. If this keeps up beyond Christmas, then we're really looking at some problems with certain plant material where, uh, like rhododendrons and azaleas, uh, some of the forsythia and, and some of those nice blooming early blooming plants, for instance. Bill, if you have any of those sorts of plants, I know you're a big green thumb. Uh, essentially, you have to keep them from drying out if the warm weather continues. Definitely, I would spray with an anti-desiccant. Okay. Such as Wilt Proof um, product. Uh, most people know that product. Uh, to help the trees not lose moisture. Like a lot of emergents, uh, Doug's in a Christmas mode. Things are going well. He didn't even care if I ate some of the ornamental kale uh, that was growing in the greenhouse. So, <laughs> you may not like getting it, into the spirit yep. of things. Is it okay if I don't want to hurt it? You no, know, just take a piece off. Okay. Talking about the gardening. It's actually pretty good. You're good. Why don't you get it going? Great. Great. <laughs> I you, know. think, he thinks I'm completely out of my mind. He's like, who is this guy? <laughs> eating, eating our, yeah. You went for the kale? Kale's delicious. It's and very it healthy. Really good smoothie. Very good for you. All growers are hip to the weather. Uh, he's not sweating it. Like Gary at Terhune Orchards, he says what he's doing is just playing the cards that the weather deals him, even if, like this year, you get the occasional joker or wild card, which this hot weather certainly is. Well, Hank, as our chief meteorologist, when does the cold weather come back? It's a good question, Sabeel. I spoke two days ago with the state climatologist, David Robinson, who's uh, rule of thumb is he doesn't predict outside three or four weeks. For the next three to four weeks, it does not look like there's going to be any cold air wow. locking into this area of the nation. He said that this warm weather will last at least that long. Beyond that, he doesn't want to, to venture a guess. But you're looking at the next I'm two and a half, three weeks that. at least. That's I like really the Jeep. Fantastic. It's great. The you know what? Ever. I had the top down on the Jeep. I think I that it. it's one of the seven signs. The apocalypse is coming. <laughs>